Yeah, I, I hope that does happen. But in the meantime, we do know that you're going out with Queensryche again. So where will yeah. people be able to see you uh, with Queensryche on this next run? Sure. So the tour starts March 3rd. Um, and that first show, I believe, is in Orlando, Florida. And then we head south, like down near Fort Lauderdale, and then back up We and we do the U.S. It's about a six week, six, six and a half week tour. OK. And, and then the last show is uh, April 16th. It'll be a hometown show for me here at Janice in St. Pete. Um, but we roll through Texas. Right. And right. So um, they can go on to any of the Queensryche official social uh, outlets out there. I mean, our website, queensrikeofficial.com. There's a tour tab. Um, I'm not sure if the Facebook has a tour date thing or not, to be honest, but. But yeah, I mean, everywhere where the official Queensryche stuff is, you can Google the tour dates. It's very easy to find. And uh, all those tour dates are there. So so yeah, we got rehearsals coming up here in 10 days. And it's going to be a completely different set. So we're going to play a lot of stuff from my era with the band. Wow, like nice. A significant amount. Yeah. And, then we're, and then we're breaking out uh, a couple really deep, deep classic cuts one of them i've never done in the band before ah uh, and something about, about a lady no lady wore okay. black is not in it okay just a um, just a question no that's cool <laughs> but uh so yeah there's there's some gonna be it's gonna be a really good set i gotta start you know warming up my voice and getting conditioned for these and i'm actually like reading lyrics to memorize it's like oh like some, a couple of the old ones, it's like, I'm trying to, re I don't remember how that goes. And so I'm refreshing yeah. lyrics and whatnot, but so yeah. It's, it's, a lo it's a longer set. Cause it's a headlining set. If, yeah. if anyone and everyone listening or watching saw uh Queens Reich on the priest, both priest legs uh, yeah. uh, on the 50 year anniversary and digital noise Alliance, when it, it came out kind of mid tour, didn't it? The Queen's Reich record. Uh, so I think the so the second tour we did with them, that's like right when the record came out. Right. That's what I thought. Right. Yeah. That's, it came out right then. So we added like two new songs. And then on that tour, we we had a, a bunch of dates that were 45 minute opening slots and then and then a lot of them that were an hour. Right. So this this headline set will be uh probably not an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. And you're going um, and out with uh, with Marty Friedman and Trauma, is that correct? Yep. So Trauma will open up the night. For those that aren't familiar, that's a, a thrash band that Cliff Burton was in before he joined Metallica. That's right. kind of their their kind of big claim to fame. Yeah. Um, really cool guys. Great music. So they're gonna they're gonna you know start kicking the show off with that, and then Marty Friedman will be direct support which is cool because, you know, he doesn't play the U S that much. Yeah. Um, so people will get a chance to check all that stuff out and, uh, you know, yeah, it's going to be good, but you know, six, six weeks when I saw you guys in Texas, it, it's, it gets tiring. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Nope. Six, six, six and a half weeks is like, you know, I mean, week two, you're like, fuck yeah. Week three, you're like, bam you know we're we're just so gelled week four you're like ah, man this is getting get tired and then week five you're like okay we got another week after this we're almost weeks you know into that we got a week left you're like and really like that last week i almost think you have the most fun because mm -hmm. you know you know the end is near yeah You've been doing it all and there's like less stress and pressure and i almost think some of those last shows are are the best the best the most fun for me because um i'm so conditioned and i know that i'm getting ready to go home soon and and it feels happier for me for some reason mm -hmm. yeah i gotta say i was thinking about you uh the 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 next day after i saw you because when we saw you in san antonio the very next day was thanksgiving and, you know, of course, I'm following you on social media and I'm following Judas Priest on social media. 
and you guys, you know, I'm at home with my family celebrating the holiday and you guys are stuck in a hotel somewhere or sitting on a bus at a truck stop parking lot. And I was just thinking, you know what, there is a lot of sacrifice that goes into what you do. And I, I, I know people look at you on stage and they see you in the magazines and they, they, I know not everybody thinks it's all glamor all the time, but I don't think it really sinks in, um, unless you really give it some thought. And I gave it a lot of thought that day. Cause the very next day, less than 24 hours later, I'm sitting at a spread with my parents and my, you know, my siblings. And I was thinking of you guys wondering yeah. what the hell you're doing, probably having dinner with the road crew somewhere, you know, oh, th- first of all, thank you for that. Um, that Thanksgiving, it was rainy and it was cold and we were at a hotel. And I remember, um, our tour manager said, Hey, they have a Thanksgiving dinner. You can order at, in the side. And it was like, you know, a little bit of Turkey and, you know, stuffing and all that. And so I, I, I actually got my own room for that day. And I was like, all right, I need just, I gotta have my, I gotta lay sprawl out on the bed. I gotta like, just have my own space. So I bought my own room and then I did a band text and I go, uh, I'm hungry. I'm going to go down and eat. If anyone wants to join me, Michael is the only one that texted me back and said, Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll join you. I was like, okay. So, uh, Michael and I went down stairs into the main area and we sat down and they ordered and they brought us our little Thanksgiving dinner. But yeah, soon we were done, you know, and then Michael went and ventured and did whatever. And then I went back to my room and watched TV. Like it was it's lonely, dude. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it can get, it can get depressing because, yeah. you know, everyone's, yeah, yeah. And you're happy and it's happy for that moment. And then they go home and they're, that was their night out. Yeah. And then, you know, but it's like, I'm going to go find, you know, find the shower in that venue. I'm going to pa- live out of a suitcase. I'm going to go back on the bus and, I'm going to do it again. And this is what I'm going to do for, you know, six weeks. Yeah. And while everybody else gets to, to do that, you know, there are those moments. So thank you for acknowledging yeah. some of those sacrifices that um, people may not think about. Yeah. I, I think about it from time to time, just in general, but that one really hit home because I guess it's because we talked to you, we had you on the podcast. Uh, yeah. I saw you in person at the gig and so it, it really like it really resonated with me and sort of stuck with me for a few days afterwards because I, that I was doing the opposite of what you were doing. So, you know, one of the, one of the things that gives me a lot of anxiety is, you know, as your parents get older and, you know, I, I, I you know, when my dad died, he, he committed suicide back in 2014 and you get that phone call. Right. Mm. And I can remember this just getting blindsided. I happened to be home. And not that it would have mattered, but I, I happened to be home. But I get anxiety thinking, what if what if something happens to my mom? What if, you know, I get that call and say, this happened to mom? Or my wife calls and says, our little dog, oh, you know, he passed away or he had a seizure or he had, you know, I get these really morbid, dark thoughts. And I think, if I'm out on a starting a tour and something happens to my family member, my sister, who knows, what do I, what do I, what do I do? Right. Do I just, not, I, I gotta go see, you gotta go home. You gotta see your mom. Right. right. But, but then again, you're, you're, you're screwing everybody's pay, everybody to promote you're, you know, it's not a good thing, yeah. but psychologically there's no way I could go out there and sing every night. And it's just, that'd be a wreck. Right. You know, so those kind of things bother me and they worry me as you know, we're aging and these things happen. And you think, I mean, Jason has toured forever. He knows what that can be like. I mean, the guys in the band, I've, I've seen guys in the band get phone calls of a family member passing away on the tour. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I don't think I could even be here. Like I would have to go home and I would be a basket case for a long time. Yeah. So those are the kinds of things you, but any traveling business person would be in the same boat as what I'm right. discussing. Not, not because I'm in a band, I'm 
special to this. Drummer, drummer from Dangerous Toys, and we were making the record, the phone rang and his father had passed away. So he's ah. in the middle of making a record. It's like your creative moment, right? Is crushed. And then yeah. you have to fly home. Yeah. Uh, it, of course, you have to fly. Yeah. So everything kind of stops for a second. and Yeah. But that's just, yeah. it's on one side, it's what you signed up for. On the other side, you're not a robot. You're a fucking right. human being. Right. So there's exactly. all of this stuff that goes along with it. Yeah. That's important. And uh, yeah, well said. 